It's time once again for your update from the city of New Hope. And as always, the mayor with us with lots of information today. Yeah. Welcome, Mayor. How are you today? Hi, Dave. Just fine. We've got a lot to talk about as fall sets in here. The first is a lot about recycling. First, let's just talk about HRG in general. What is HRG? What do residents need to know about some upcoming dates? So it's, it's Hennepin Recycling Group. They're actually based out of Brooklyn Park, but they include a New Hope. And they've got just a ton of stuff going on. One of the things they talked about is the curbside cleanup. That's that bulky stuff you put on your curb. Well, that's going to be in New Hope. It's going to be March 28th to April 7th. Uh, there's 10 zones. And if you go onto the website that's on your screen, you can see what zone you're in. It'll tell you what day they're going to pick the stuff up. Now, just a couple things with that. Apparently, a couple of years ago when they did that, there were a lot of um, things that looked like they were brought into the city mm. from outside. And so now they're restricting uh, the amount of stuff you can put out. Like you can only put out two mattresses, and I believe it's either one or two appliances. But go onto that website and see what you can put out. And please, just do your stuff, not, not your relatives, because it just increases our cost, and we have to pass that on to you. Makes we sense. don't want to do that. HRG-recycling.com, as you see, is that website. They've also got something coming up a little bit more recent here. This is going to be something to do with pumpkins. What's going on? Well, if the squirrels haven't totally eaten your pumpkin, I... you can bring it to uh, the Pumpkin Recycle Place at Central Park in Brooklyn Center, or I'm sorry, Brooklyn Park, and that's at 8440 Regent. Uh, bring your pumpkins there after Halloween. They have a big recycle bin. You put them in. They're going to compost those, and they'll use that compost in their gardens and various other places. Very good. Good idea. Now, now there's also the yard waste drop-off site. That's in Maple Grove, but that's open until the 30th of November. So if you're raking up the leaves, of course, you're not going to rake them in the street because you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. So. So you can bundle those all up, bring them out to that recycle center in Maple Grove. And that address is 10300 Maple Grove Parkway. So the hours are 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday and noon to 7 on Sundays. And if you bring your leaves out in bags, you just empty the bags and take you to empty the leaves out of your bag, take your bags back home. Mm -hmm. And if you bring out branches, they should, they should be branches, not big tree trunks. Got it. Very good. And here's that website to that information, mgyardwaste.com, where you can find out more about getting that yard waste taken care of. Yeah, they, right, do need to bring the, they do need to bring the driver's license. Right. Because it's open to all residents in certain cities, and you just have to prove that you live in the ball. Perfect. Good advice there. Great ways to help people during the fall season here. Let's move ahead to update on performance, measurement report, and SMART goals. Sounds very fancy. Give us a little recap of what this is. It says the performance measurement report uh, takes the cities of New Hope, Crystal, uh, Golden Valley, uh, New Brighton, and Richfield. Those are comparable cities to ours. And what they do is they compare uh, what's been done in those cities, such as uh, how many major employees we have, how many apartments we have, how many uh, jobs there are. Just just things that are going on in comparison to the other cities. The SMART goals are the goals that the department head sets, and then you can go on and see how they um, achieve those goals. So that's on our website. Both of those we voted at a council meeting to put those on our website. You can go then and see what's going on with those two things. And more information on the city's website, this time about economic development in the city. What can residents find there? Well, that's another report. That is simply, that's not comparing anything. That's simply what's happening in New Hope. That talks about uh, businesses that are here, uh, new ones. It also talks about number of jobs. Uh, it ranks the uh, top 15 businesses in New Hope and how many people they employ. Uh, it talks about the scattered site program and the houses they've done on that. So that's kind of an interesting, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, it's interesting to see that on the website. Website is newhopemn.gov to find out that information. Speaking of businesses, one of the very large businesses in the city is St. Therese. And they, we have talked about, are underway with some plans for some big improvements there. Give us a little recap of how that's moving ahead. 
They're huge improvements. So St. Teresa is actually located on Bass Lake Road. Uh, they have other St. Teresa facilities around the area. And I know they're building a new one in Corcoran. But the one in New Hope, they're rehabbing the one they have here to the tune of $82 million. Mm. So they're going to build an extension that will be closer to a Bass Lake Road. Uh, the idea is they're going to move the residents, the, not the nursing home people, but the people that are the residents, move them into that new facility, rehab the apartments they're in, kind of update them, uh, make them a little brighter, a little bigger, and then move those residents back into those apartments. Mm -hmm. And they'll just keep moving things around. They said nobody will be displaced while all this is going on. They'll all stay on the campus. But uh, this is a three or four year project. But this is just the beginning. And it's $82 million. Quite an investment in the city, so something to watch for, and we'll keep you updated on. City services survey, we've talked about that over the past couple months, and now the surveys are in. What are you finding out, and how many eventually came in? We got 663. About half of those came online, the other half were in paper, and we allowed people to write comments on those surveys. The comments that were written will go to the departments that they, they were uh, referring to, and the department heads that and we'll review them, be able to answer the questions. And the departments will get back to the people who wrote them if they gave us a phone number. Uh, we haven't seen the final results yet. They'll compile those, and then we'll see those at the November work session. So you'll get an update as soon as I get an update. Sounds good. Let's give people an update on Windsor Ridge as the numbers keep moving along here. You've got some great numbers to pass along. This is good news for the city. This is. So Windsor Ridge is that little piece of land about on 51st in Pennsylvania. It's a little kind of a half moon shaped piece that was nothing, actually. It wasn't even a park. It was just a hunk of land with some trees on it by the railroad. So a, a company bought the land from us and put up 32 single family homes. The average home was about 420000 So as I understand, 20 have been sold. 12 are either sales pending or they're waiting to close. When they all sell, and that will be shortly, they'll be adding $10 million to our tax base. That's just amazing. Somebody asked me, why don't those builders build small, small single family homes? Well, they make more money on the big ones than they do on the little ones. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is people that are living in the smaller houses in New Hope are moving up into these bigger ones, leaving the smaller houses for new families to buy. Uh, they're a lot more affordable. So there is some movement and we still have a lot of affordable housing with this new housing. It was just a step up for people that wanted a bigger house. Very good project. Let's move ahead to items that are coming up here in the city. One is on November 3rd, the business networking group will get back together. Where is this going to be held? I guess that's still a little bit up in the air, but what's the main topic? Well, it's going to be at Northridge, the residents at Northridge. Typically, when they um, when they have these meetings, whoever is hosting will tell us a little bit about their business, and this is the business of Northridge that we'll hear about. And then the other businesses that are there get an opportunity to boast about what's happening at their business. Don't know if it's going to be virtual or in person. A lot depends on what's going on at Northridge, but the people who belong to the business networking group will get an email telling them uh, where where it's going to be or if it's going to be virtual. So stay tuned and look for that. Sounds good. Now to the police department, a few updates here. One is police working with the Human Rights Commission and something to do with crayons. What is happening? What is the challenge here? Well, there is a box of crayons called Colors of the World. And what they are is skin colors of people around the world. And they're, they, uh, the Human Rights Commission got some money from somewhere, and they bought these little boxes of crayons. They're giving them to all the kindergartners in New Hope mm -hmm. and asking them to draw a picture of the people who take care of them in the color that comes out of their box that matches the color of the people that are taking care of them. Then they're going to bring them on the uh, for the 4th of November okay. from 3 to 6 at City Hall. And we'll have them hanging there, and the families can come and see them. People can come in and see them, see what these kids have drawn. It'd be really interesting to see what these kids draw with these color crayons. And, of course, they get to keep the color crayons. Yeah, what a great idea. Very good. Another uh, way the police department is reaching out. Here's another way they're reaching out. Recently at Northridge, a site we just mentioned a minute ago, here are some pictures. Tell us about the fun that was had at Northridge. Well, that was a copy with the cop. They're doing, they're trying to do a lot of that. 
So what they are doing is going to various places that request them. And uh, I know that at the lodge by uh, Ambassador, uh, they're playing bingo with them. But this coffee with the cop, they just go and the police officers are dressed in their uniform. Uh, they're encouraged to talk to the police officers, ask them questions, um, just just become friends with them. Yeah. So if you are someone that lives in an apartment building, you would like the cops to come out to your building, all you need to do is do, call the uh, the non-emergency number, ask for Brad Calio or the community service officer, and tell them you want them to come out, mm -hmm. and they will. And I understand they're still de delivering meals on wheels every Tuesday. Good for them. Looks like they're having lots of fun connecting with the community. Now to Public yeah. Works, we've been talking about the utility bill certification process, and we have lots of numbers to pass along today. How about a few other we bigger do. numbers, but the number is shrinking, Mayor, which is a good sign. It is. So what that is, is the, the city buys their water from Minneapolis. We pay for it. They put it in those water towers on Sunday nights, and they fill up our water towers, and then we sell it to the residents with through the meters that you have in your houses or apartments. Well... So people, some people don't pay that bill. And in July, it started out to be $364,000 that they were behind on the bills. It's now down to $252,000, which is a lot of money. Well, what happens is they've sent them letter after letter after letter, and it, it's now being put on their taxes. They have until, I believe, the 15th of November to pay that. Okay. But now it comes with a $50 administration fee. Mm -hmm. And then it'll get put on their taxes. So it will get paid. But, you know, if, if people don't pay their water bill, the rest of us have to pay the water bill. Right. And that's not fair. So we're going to get the money. Uh, usually what it is is the toilet's running, a faucet's dripping, and they didn't get around to fixing it. Now they haven't had to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So if something's leaking or dripping, you should really get it fixed as soon as you can. Good advice. Good advice. Let's move ahead to another item with Public Works. This is the Central Garage. It is a busy time of the year for those folks. They are changing seasons. What's happening behind those closed doors? Okay, so at Public Works, we have this department called Central Garage. Any vehicle over $5,000 gets bought through Central Garage. Each of the departments in the city pay into the Central Garage in the anticipation that they're going to need a um, I don't know, a new cart at the golf course or a new Zamboni at the ice arena. Anything that has wheels and a motor gets bought through Central Garage. Well, the other thing Central Garage does is they do the emergency repairs on the vehicles and they also do uh, winterizing them. So they're really busy getting those, putting in different oil, getting those things all ready for the winter time. So Central Garage is pretty busy right now. I can imagine. Speaking of getting ready for winter, you might want to plug your ears during this part, but we're going to talk a little bit about snow plows. First off, trimming trees. What has to happen before the plows go through? Well, those plows are big, real big. Mm -hmm. And through the summer and the fall, the, the branches have grown and the leaves have kind of gotten over the street a little bit. So all of that has to be trimmed off before the snow plows. We don't want the snow plows to get tied up with that. The other thing that's happened is the snowplow drivers have been sent to a defensive driving class. Okay. I would never have thought, <laughs> but I suppose that's probably important for them. Um, bless their hearts. They're the ones that get up at two in the morning and plow our streets. Yeah, usually and a lot of that news comes from the drivers around snowplows to be careful, but that's interesting. Plow drivers get of, that too. Speaking of plowing our streets, when you go and look at the performance measure report, you can see how people uh, think we plow our streets compared to those five, four other cities. Mm -hmm. We did really well, by the way. Good for you. Good comparison there. Let's move to Park and Rec. A lot of fun happening here. In fact, they're working on some publications looking ahead to winter and believe it not, even to spring. How's that process coming? Well, that wonderful magazine I talk to all the time, In Motion, that's, that's going to the printer. It should be out mid-fall. Uh, you'll get another brochure in uh, mid-fall, mid-November. You'll get another brochure from them talking about the programs that are going on this fall and winter. The other thing that's happening is they're starting to book music for the, uh, the, the um, uh, activity Civic center. Center Park, right? Yes. So they're, they're booking music groups, and they're also uh, booking movies for that. So they're looking for sponsors for either the music groups or the movies. Uh, if you're one of the sponsors, it gets printed in the, the book that you're a sponsor. 
your name goes there when you're, when you're watching mm -hmm. the movie. We're using that theater for a lot more things than just the uh, the Broadway theater that we have in the summer. That is fantastic. A couple other items coming up at this time of the year. You're still looking for some staff people for warming houses and also the gyms. Is that correct? Yeah, we are. Well, the warming houses and the ice arena. We okay. have our gym employees. They're being trained now, but we need uh, we need helpers at the ice arena. And these are paid jobs, by the way. They're not full time, but they're kind of, you know, a little part time job you can fill in. So the warming houses in the ice arena, one's inside, one's sort of inside, outside, the that's warming right. houses. But if you're looking for a job this winter, that's a good place to look. All right. And a lot of activity going on right now around the Civic Center Campus Park. Tell us about some of the work and especially some of that underground work that should help out with a few water problems. Well, for those who go to Civic Center Park, the playground, if they've noticed when it rains, it floods. Mm -hmm. So it becomes like an, a, an additional little, little swimming pool over there. And they can't <laughs> use that park for a few days until the water goes down. Well, after much ado, they finally figured out that uh, the, the pipe was too small and it was clogged. And so the water that should have been flowing out of there wasn't. And so it was just standing there. And because it's kind of sunk down a little bit, it filled up pretty bad. Sure. So now they had to dig down and they put in a, a flow pipe so they can get that water out of there. We shouldn't have water there anymore. Of course, now that it probably won't rain anymore, but it should take care of that problem. And thank goodness. So this week they'll put in some more engineering chips to, uh, to cover that up, but that should take care of the problem. All right, let's go over to the golf course. How are things going as we look outside your windows? There's still some nice weather to golf in. It's gorgeous out there. So this is the last week for leagues. So after this week, there should be more available tee times during the day. Good. And somebody said, well, it's fall. Golf is over. I'm here to tell you I played till the 14th of December last year with stocking cap and gloves. <laughs> so it's not over yet till it's over. Yep. So I think we have about six weeks left to play for those diehards that want to play. Uh, do call and get a tee time, though. Don't, don't just show up because sometimes there might be somebody in front of you. Got it. And they're doing their best to blow the leaves off of the fairway. So now more important than ever to stay in the fairway so you can find your golf ball. How about the ice arena? How are things going there? And how is the skating school coming? Well, the ice arena is, um, uh, of course, they have open skating on Fridays, 630 to 8, and Sundays, 4 to 6. And they also run skates and they'll sharpen your skates. So if you want to do some open skating, um, I, I rented skates and went to ice skate and they gave me a walker. <laughs> to uh, keep me upright. It weren't very successful. With a walker, you could easily fall over backwards, too. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not my forte, I guess. <laughs> but So there's open skating there. Of course, they're still having the elite kids there, and they're doing scrimmages. And pretty soon, they'll start with the uh, the tournaments with the, the high school teams. Very good. And again, the skating school there for those like the mayor or others who want to learn how to skate, there's that opportunity there as well. Saturday mornings and okay. Monday Monday evenings. Uh, you can go onto our website, onto Park and Rec and, and the Ice Arena, and it'll tell you how to sign up if you care to sign up for that. All right. There's that website. Once again, newhopemn.gov. A few final notes to pass along. First is we have the pleasure here to have the city manager in, Kirk McDonald, to talk a little budget. And he had a fun time talking budget, as he always does. So something the city really wants to get the message out of what the budget process is and what some of the numbers are. Well, Kirk starts working on the budget in February, and so he just really lives that budget. He knows it very well. He makes all the department heads go over it line, line by line with him to make sure we're spending money where we should be spending money and not uh, spending it where we shouldn't. Just because it's in the budget doesn't mean we have to spend it. Mm -hmm. Most of our, well, all of our um, department heads, if they don't need to do it this year, they won't. Okay. They'll, they'll put it off until they really do need to do it. And what's on their budget is things they need. The budget this year uh, will be an increase of 4.67. That's a preliminary budget. Mm -hmm. It may go down from there, but uh, you can pretty well assured it, well, it won't go up, okay. but it can go down. All right. So if you want to see that interview with Kirk, you can see that on the CCX Media website or go to the city's website or Facebook page. It is there as well. Final note, something coming up on the 28th, and this is a neat combination and partnership of a couple different groups. What's happening on the 28th? Well, first of all, October is National Disability Employee Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, the I'm reading this because the titles are so long. 
a business in New Hope called Healthy for Life Meals, which is on 43rd and Quebec, is getting an award from the Minnesota Organization for Habilitation and Rehabilitation. They hire a lot of uh, employees who have disabilities to help pack these meals. And so they're getting this award from the Minnesota group and they're getting that on the 28th of October at one o'clock. Well, congratulations to that group and a nice event to attend if you can. Some great work being done. So a lot passed along for you today, a lot going on in the city. If you want to find out more or you mention a lot of things that the website is key to find out more, newhopemn.gov. Mayor, thanks Dave, once I, again for your time. Yep, go ahead. Dave, before you go away, I have just one more thing. The yep. photos are ready to be viewed ah, on, starting November 1st. They'll be able to view them online and at City Hall. And then the People's Choice Awards, you can vote for them and they can do that. We received 20 photos this year. It's smaller than other years because we'd only allow people to have one photo mm -hmm. per person. So, and again, there's that, that youth photo contest that's going on too. So get a chance to look at them. They're really yeah. pretty. Very fun. And again, that's part of that in focus photo contest that we talked about. And if you missed it this year, you can get in on it next year. Mayor, Thank thanks once again, as always, for your time today. Look forward to see you again next week. Thanks, Dave. See you then. Bye. Learn more about The Connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.